we will look at how to use the chainable setting in an integration procedure here as you can see i have an omni script open which has an ip in it Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we will look at how to use the chainable setting in an integration procedure and why you should also enable the chain on step to make it work properly. Let's see what the issue is. Here, as you can see, I have an Omni script open which has an IP in it. The IP doesn't do much. I have two remote actions inside it which actually calls an Apex class and inside the Apex class, I have a for loop which runs 70 times and each time it runs, it just does an SQL query. It just executes on a SQL query. So, the total transaction would basically run more than 100 SOQL. So let's go ahead and see what happens when you run the Omniscript. As you can see, we get an error saying too many SOQL queries one on. So long running integration procedures often fail with kernel limits, especially the SOQL one on error. This happens when one step runs too many queries in a single transaction. So our IP is running more number of queries in a single transaction, the allow limit. So let's talk about what Chainable does. Chainable solves this issue by splitting the work. When a step cross the configured limit, Salesforce saves the progress of what it had made till that point, ends the transaction and continues in a new one. That way, your process keeps running instead of failing. Okay, now let's see how to enable the chainable configuration. So to enable it, go to your edit mode of the Omni script and click on your IP. Go under remote properties and you can see the chainable option. Enable it here. Now, go to your integration procedure. Set a threshold for the chainable query limit. I'm giving to 70, let's say 70 because my loop is actually running for 70 times. So what it happens is once you reach the 70 threshold, sensors will automatically continue in a new transaction. But doing this alone will not solve this issue. As you can see, if you run the integration procedure now, it would still give you the error. So one thing that you have to do is you need to enable the chain on step for each of the steps inside your integration procedure. So let's go to our integration procedure steps. We have two steps here and in the properties for the remote action, you can see there is an option called chain on step. Enable those or both of the steps. This forces the next step to always run in a new transaction. Without this, you may still hit the kernel limits. With it, the break will happen cleanly and the process completes successfully. Now that we have turned on chain on step both for both of the steps, let's save it. Uh, okay, now it's turned on. Let's go ahead and save it. Now let's go. Okay, now activate it. Let's go back to our Omniscript and do a refresh and click on next. As you can see, this time we didn't get any error, which means the chainable and chain on step did take effect and we surpassed the SOQL 1 hour error. So to recap, Chainable set your transaction limits and chain on step enforces the split. Together, they keep your long running integration procedures reliable and error free. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video on Qable Chainable.